hello so I'm still in my pajamas uh, I did get ready for this video I have not yet showered um, it's just one of those days where a million things are going on but I wanted to shoot this video for you guys and so we are actually going to sit down so grab your tea grab your coffee grab your whatever it is you like to drink maybe you want snacks instead i'm not judging i have my water my gallon water to the kitchen we're gonna talk about all about explant fat transfer um how things have been going to answer your guys's questions so if you're curious to know how this has been stay tuned so today is my two year explant journey um anniversary so Two years ago, I went in to have surgery at Meridian Plastic Surgery in Indiana uh, with Dr. Christine Kelly, who is fantastic. She did a great job, um, and it was a nine-hour surgery, so very long surgery. I was under for over nine hours. Um, came out of it, and it was, you know, quite the recovery experience. I thought it was going to take a week to recover. Um, but it took quite a bit longer. So I ended up having to take about two weeks off work. So I'm going to talk all about this. I had questions about how it went, how it's going. Am I happy with the results? You know, it's two years later and I did show update photos on Instagram. I'm not sure if YouTube will demonetize for that. So I want to try and be respectful of YouTube's, um, you know they're, they're pretty strict about the rules so i just want to be respectful of that so basically we'll just chat about everything and talk about it and um if you guys have questions like further questions i can do a follow-up video as well so i ended up getting my breast implants taken out two years ago um, i was having a lot of health issues which may or may not actually have been related to the breast implants i found out later on that i had celiac disease and that's why i was not getting better after having them removed so if you guys watch my previous videos you'll actually see how sick i looked after having them taken out i felt sicker afterwards and i think that's just from the stress of going through a surgery um and everything else that goes into having a complicated surgery um your body takes a lot of work to recover and my body just wasn't recovering because i had underlying celiac and things just got worse after that point because i truly believe that my autoimmune condition celiac disease is an autoimmune condition um i believe that that caused further complications so i did have a lot of my symptoms resolve post-surgery so a lot of like the um tremors the you know a lot of the weird things that i was experiencing you know the crazy burning and tingling in my like um neck area my hands and my feet a lot of that went away and the tinnitus i would always have like really bad ringing in my ears that was gone but i was still experiencing like the vertigo i was still experiencing a lot of really weird symptoms and so it's hard to say if the breast implants were really the root cause. I do not know. I think getting them out helped me to feel better. Um, but, you know, people asked a lot of the questions. Like, the main question I got was, do you miss your breast implants? And I really don't, um, or I didn't, until I started training for an NPC competition again. And I am pretty flat. <laughs> Um, a lot of my fat is gone. So I went from being like 23% body fat down to 17% body fat. I'm currently at 17%. And the first place to go was my chest. So you guys can see I am pretty much flat as a surfboard. Um, there's really just not a whole lot there, which is fine. I mean, I'm happy with my body. But the way that I look in a swimsuit, and I actually have the same bra on that I wore um, for my before picture, like when I had my implants in, and then for my explant, this was like the bra that I wore for all that, so I'm just kind of showing you guys. Um, I just don't have cleavage. Like, I still have some some boobage but it's really just not a lot and i know that you know as i drop my body fat more and more and more i'm going to not have anything and 
it's kind of hard to reconcile with that. Like when I was at a higher body fat percentage, I was so happy with my boobs. I felt like they looked natural. I liked the way that they moved with my body and I actually liked the look of them better than I liked implants. However, you know, when I started losing a lot of the body fat, that was a place where it started to, you know, leave from. So I think, you know, in the upcoming year, like after I compete, so I have a competition April 3rd, I have a competition in November, and then after my season's done, um, I'm going to see if I have any pockets of fat. I've already found a surgeon that I think will do a really great job, Dr. Uh, Barrett Plastic Surgery in California. And I think I'm gonna see if um, my husband's okay with it. I might have a second tra fat transfer to my breasts because I just, I know that a lot of women, you know, get a second round or even a third round just to really, you know, the first round you do lose quite a bit of volume and I actually retained a lot. So I'm hopeful, you know, for that. And in Dr. Barrett's video, he talked about different uh, calendulas, which are the things that they use to suction the fat to put in your breast. Um, and the doctor, Christine Kelly, who did my initial fat transfer, you know, she did it right after taking my implants out, which makes the retention less. And she also did smart lipo, which is laser lipo. Uh, Dr. Barrett's completely against it because it kills a lot of the fat. And I do have balls of fat in my breast that actually, um, we had a mammo done and I don't know if you guys remember the video I did on, I found a lump in my breast, but I have like a golf ball size lump in this one, and then I have tons of little lumps. It's like little marbles, and that's from the fat, you know, not taking properly. So Dr. Barrett can actually take those out. He can redo the fat transfer, all of that. So I might just have that done just to get a better, you know, situation. Also in this breast, I do have a pocket that never filled out quite right. Um, so I might have that redone and I might have the, my, my scars are very faded and Mark said he couldn't see them at all But I might have like go back and have my scars revised as well um, During that time. So there's a few things that I'm thinking about doing in the new year um, or even next year in 2022 just to kind of Solidify this situation, you know, I it's I talked about it on my Instagram and it was a very emotional thing for me where, you know, I saw myself losing body fat and I'm gonna show you guys a picture um, from this moment where I, you know, I saw myself and back when I was first competing, I really almost kind of relied on my implants because I could get down to a super low body fat and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about, but like I would get down to a really low body fat percentage and I still felt confident in a bikini. Not saying I don't like a smaller chest, but this is what I'm talking about. So you can see it just looks to me a little weird. Um, this was like back when I had implants in and I would get down to like, literally I would get down to like 12, 11, 10% body fat and that's me on stage winning and <laughs> that's me on stage winning that I won third place. The other girls were so beautiful. They looked amazing. Um, that was my first competition, but you can see that I just, I felt more confident with them. Um, and I just felt better with them, but I don't necessarily want implants. And I would never get implant. Actually, I, I would never say never, but I don't think I'm strongly against myself getting implants again. So I think what I'm going to do, because I'm very happy with the way I look, I think I'm just going to eventually get that second or third fat transfer, however many it takes to just kind of retain enough so that I'm happy. I'm fine with being a B cup for competitions. I'm fine with you know, I think I could get back to being like a C cup off season. And then when I'm on season, probably a low B cup, but just so I'm not completely flat. And so, yeah, that's kind of the update on it. Um, the lumps have kind of stayed where they are. It's definitely a little concerning because my radiologist, so I am married to a radiologist, by the way, um, he does interventional radiology, but I went to a different guy who did mammograms. So he's a boob doctor. He looks at boobs all day long in a mammogram form. 
and he explained to me what he was seeing he showed me i mean just a really great great experience with him it was northwest radiology in indiana and he showed me on the screen like hey this is all the little specks you have and it's gonna be very hard to detect uh breast cancer if you ever have breast cancer and i was like oh my gosh like that's a little concerning because you know you want to take all prevention when it comes to things like your health and that was just really concerning for me so i really think this revision surgery will be great um i was talking with mark you know even like two years ago about potentially getting my nose done um this is something that i've thought about and i've gone back and forth on where i just want to kind of like i have a little bit of a slope here and i just want to get rid of that um slope area and maybe make this like a little smaller because i do have a little bit of a bulb um but make this a little smaller and like turned up just a little bit they call it a barbie nose um, i've looked on instagram and i really like how the turkish plastic surgeons do them um again this is i'm totally pro doing what makes you happy and what makes you confident and for me this is something i thought a lot about and i've gone off and on with it so it's something i'm going to continue to think about but i just i've never been happy with my nose ever and so i feel like it just looks a little beaky and in photos especially when i'm smiling like it just i'm just not super happy with it like i just it makes me feel self-conscious and so i know some people are probably watching this like you don't need to have that done that's not something that you should even be concerned with i've had people say like you know that I'm vain for thinking about getting that done, but I don't really judge people for their What they want to do with their life like I think of it kind of like changing outfits in a way it's like it's your presentation to the world and Whether that is you know having really good skincare regimen, which I highly recommend and which I'm all about or whether it is, you know, changing your hair to being how you want it to be, whether it is going and getting med spa stuff done, facial, um, nose jobs, whatever it is that makes you happy, as long as you're safe with it and you don't go too overboard to the point where you don't feel like yourself anymore or you do something in a rushed manner, I think that that can really mess up people's lives but when you think about something for a couple of years and if it's still on your mind i think if you save for it you know if you are responsible you don't take out like a loan for it because they like literally loan shark you if you take out a loan for any cosmetic surgery i would never advise that or recommend it i think if you set aside like a savings account where you're saving for what it is you want to get done and then at the end of the like set a timeline for it and then at the end of that if you, it's something you're still like oh i'm still thinking about getting that done then you have the money for it and if you're like you know what i just you know that was a season of my life where i was really unhappy with this or that and i don't want to get it done then you have all this extra money that you can invest in something like real estate or and by the way if you need a real estate agent i'm your girl um but real estate or anything else like you can do that so i just think it's kind of a win-win situation um i think it's smart to save your money anyways so i just i don't see anything wrong with it but like i said that's something that i've totally thought about it's not something that i'm 100 percent certain on especially since it is the face it's something that people see right away and i haven't even bit the bullet on botox yet like i really probably need to start doing something right here and then like a little bit right here um but i haven't even bit the bullet on that so i probably won't be getting it done but we'll see and also i really don't want to go to turkey to get my nose done and i don't think i'd find a good rhinoplasty person that i'm obsessed with here um there's like one guy who i found on instagram who i really liked but like i said if you have any suggestions if you've actually had your nose done by someone here and you got like a really fabulous look and you're obsessed with it drop it in the comments i'm curious to know and hear from other people um what they've you know done and have you had an explant how did it go like i'm curious to hear from other people how their experience was my experience was traumatic um not because of the doctor not because of you know it was just because it was a really long surgery the recovery was really hard and i was dealing with an underlying autoimmune condition the entire time and so i would just you know advise 
like if I were to go back in time and redo it, I think what I would have done, I probably would have gotten them out. Like I probably would have gotten them out, but here's what I would have done differently is I would have gone to my doctor, my primary care, and I would have had them run a ton of tests um, prior to getting them out just to make sure, you know, my health and have a baseline so that I could compare my baseline to post-surgery and to what was going on post-surgery. And also, I may have not gotten them out and done such a rush surgery had I known, oh, I can control my symptoms with diet. I maybe would have thought a little bit more on it. I probably would have um, had more time to prepare for the explant instead of like rushing into it. And so that's my like advice on it. Um, I had a couple questions that I wanted to answer from you guys. One of them was, did it hurt? <clears throat> I've already answered how long recovery was, but um, did it hurt? The liposuction was what hurt the most. So getting the explant done actually didn't really hurt that much. Um, she cut through the uh, scars I already had. So I had scars underneath my chest. She did an M block um, and she cut from like right here. I have huge long scars. So it's like the size, like from my armpit to here. Um, I do have scars, so that's part of the reason why I want to do the scar revision surgery is because I do have quite a bit of scarage, and um, I did have keloids after my surgery that my massage therapist worked with me on how to kind of, you know, massage and work with keloids, and um, we worked with, like, different oil combinations that he had, and I, you know, was able to kind of get that under control. You could use... Um, they have like silicone things that you can rub on it and silicone gel that's supposed to help with the scarring. There's so many options and I definitely recommend talking to your plastic surgeon uh, if you do have scars because that's what I'll be doing. Um, but talking to them about you know different options and different things you can do to help minimize the scarring because the scars are really what reminds you every day of what happened and it's something that has an impact on you and so um, that was something that really stuck with me was, you know, had I not had scars, I think I'd be a lot happier with the shrinking of my boobs because, you know, it's a huge scars compared to my chest size now. Like when I had implants and you couldn't even see it because the implant would cover the scar. Now I don't have that. So it's just a whole different scenario that I'm dealing with. So anyways, I don't want to make this video super, super long. I just wanted to, you know, cheers to my two year anniversary of my explant. Um, today is a day that I will forever remember, January 2nd, 2019. Um, I can't believe it's already 2021, it's crazy. I'm a married woman. Um, I'm working on, you know, competing again. I have huge goals for this year. I really do want to make it to the Olympia and it has crossed my mind that, you know, having a small chest um, may be something that deters judges from voting me to go that far. You know, if I work really, really hard and have like an incredible body or just as hard as me but has implants, would that mean that I wouldn't qualify? Like it, these thoughts cross my mind. I think I just think too much, honestly. I just think too much. That's really what it is. But you know, I just want to make sure that I bring the best package of me to the stage. And this is something that I'm very passionate about. I love bodybuilding. Um, I'm like obsessed with bodybuilding. This channel started off as a bodybuilding channel and that was back in like 2014 or 15. And then I started taking YouTube more seriously in 2016. And I created a lot of videos on YouTube in 2016, but then, you know, I grew up and I realized how like immature I was back then. I think I was like 24 at the time. And you know, it was me living in Vegas. It was a lot of like bottle service and crazy videos. And <sighs> like I'm married now. Um, I'm sure it wouldn't affect my career, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't really want all that stuff on YouTube still. So I did take down a lot of my videos. Some of them are private. Um, I still have videos up that are, I think, good information. Like I wanted to create more value versus just like random vlogs. Even though I still do a lot of random vlogs, I still want to give you guys extremely great content. And so that's why I took down a lot of those videos. I was like, they're just not really, I mean, 
it's just us acting crazy and wild in Las Vegas. And I was like, this doesn't really fit where I want to go with this channel. I really want to help you guys to reach your goals. I want to um, grow like within the community and really just create amazing connections and have fun with this, you know, create incredible video content and step my game up with that. Like I bought a gimbal in 2020. I, you know, started using my GX, G7X again. I have a Mark II Canon and um, just started to really kind of take that more seriously. So I really hope this video helped you guys. If you've had questions, you can always drop questions below too. I'm really good about answering my comments. I try to answer every single comment that comes through the channel as long as they're respectful. Like there for you guys, like I just always want to be like, you know, an older sister to maybe girls who are younger than me or like just a best friend to people around my age. Like that's kind of like why I started this channel was it's just kind of like girl talk. It's you know, real life, it's really unfiltered. Like I don't, I just act like myself on here and I just hope that the things that I say like help somebody and inspire someone to maybe start working out or eating, you know, differently to help reach their goals or, you know, starting competition prep if that's something you wanna do or, you know, if you have had issues with um, health issues like maybe you know watching this will inspire you to go to your doctor and get to the root of what's going on or you know if you need to get an explant like know that it's not the end of the world you know there's things you can do post explant that's the reason why I do this channel and that's the reason why I do videos is just because you know I do love the YouTube community um, I do love hearing from you guys I love Instagram how we've gotten to know a lot of each other have gotten to know each other on Instagram and we've created such a fun Like community. I do have the new Facebook group, which I'll drop a link down below um, That's my fitness community where we do the transformation app um, Which is now called the first form app. So I'll leave the link for that too um, If you do sign up for the transformation app the new first form app Make sure you upgrade so that you can message me in the app. Um, I can message you, we can work on your meal plan. Um, I do do a phone call or a video call session with my new clients um, just to make sure that they are comfortable with their workouts, with their meal plan. We do a macro-based meal assessment, so it's just helping you to kind of see where you're at currently and make proper adjustments from there so that you can get the results that you want. So for instance, like someone who goes to Starbucks in the morning and orders a venti um, super sugary drink for breakfast, we may make a swap where we're doing protein coffee in the morning or we're doing a protein shake with your um, Starbucks order and maybe switching to sugar free or whatever it may be in order for you to reach your goals. So. Um, hopefully this video helped you guys. Happy 2021. This is gonna be my first video of 2021. I'm so, so excited for this year. I'm hoping it's a better year. I'm hoping that things go good for you. I'm hoping that, you know, all the crazy of 2020 stays the heck over in 2020 and we can just enjoy 2021. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to hit thumbs up subscribe and I'll see you guys later.